God okay. created us and he's commanded us to love one another and to not murder one another. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's all about what God commands us to do. That's okay. how you get that's how you get morality in the first place. That's how you know what's right and what's wrong in the first place. Paul because of God. Right. Not right. Their own moral compass. There there's there's no morality without God. Alright. Right. Okay. You don't like I definitely object to that. Why? How, how do you know what's right and what's wrong? My own mind and my own opinions. So so it's so, 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 so it's just your preference. Like it's not really so it's not really right or wrong, it's just what you prefer. Like if somebody thinks it's, if, if somebody yeah. prefers to rape people, then that's right for them. Is that what you're saying? Speaking of rape, what do you think about like rape victims who are in this situation where they do have a child that's completely unwanted? Yeah. Um, they should love their baby. They should love their baby. They should love the rapist that actually is. Well, assaulted. they're not loving. Well, well, they should love the rapist. We're supposed to love our enemies. That's what Jesus said. But like, um, a, the child that had nothing to do with the rape. Just right, because okay. your body was violated doesn't give you the right to violate somebody else's body. All right, you just said that based on my own moral compass, I could call a rapist correct, but you just told me to love my rapist based on God's moral Well, no, I'm saying if you reject God, you don't have morality, you just have preferences. And I'm, I'm pointing out that, hey, rapists have their preferences for morality. You have your preferences for what's right and what's wrong, and you can't really have an objective standard you can't really have morality you just have preferences on i like this you like that and there's no real you can't really say hey you're wrong all you're doing is just stating your arbitrary opinion okay it's pretty meaningless okay, <laughs> so, so you know <laughs> all right thank you yeah I'd, I'd encourage you to follow jesus christ you know and like and, and like love all human beings, you know, in every stage of I do, life. But it's not you do? When, when they're not, like, I don't consider them, I feel like it's more like the potential of my child, but it's not necessarily like, it's not grown yet. Oh, no, well, so like a five year old isn't grown yet either, right? But, but they're alive, alive. It's living. But these, are, these yeah, children are alive too. No, they're not. Like yes, they are alive. It, it's a living organism growing through the first stages of life. It's very obvious. Like read a biology textbook. It's so it's so obvious. Do they have feelings? Why does that matter? Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Some of them can feel feel pain at a certain stage. But it, but the the ability to feel pain doesn't give you human rights. It doesn't make it like we should love everybody no matter what their physical characteristics or physical abilities. Your physical abilities don't determine whether or not you have value. You have intrinsic value because you're created in the image of God. God made us like himself and he hates it when we violate each other's bodies. How do you know that? Yeah. The Bible says, the Bible tells us that. The Bible indicates to us. How do you know that the Bible is How do I know that? How do you know that someone didn't just write the Bible and say that Because the Bible gives us the only worldview that provides the preconditions for intelligibility. The only worldview that basically make, makes sense of reality. Like, it tells us the revelation from a God who knows everything, who created everything, who doesn't lie, who doesn't change. And without revelation from a God like that, a triune God like that, we can't know what the nature of reality is, right? If you trust in yourself, you could always be wrong. So that means you shouldn't put your faith in what you think about the nature of reality. You should put your faith in what God has said and what he's revealed through his word, the Bible. But the Bible, you don't know that the Bible is God. I just like, messed I up. Well, I'm saying if it, were, if it wasn't God, I wouldn't be able to know anything. I'm saying in order to, in order, in order to know anything, you need, you need a revelation from an unchanging God who doesn't lie. Well, I know a lot of things without God. Well, how, no, no, how do you know that? Like, how do you know that your consciousness is attached to your body? How do you know that you exist? Science. How do you know? How do you know that I'm not a figment of your imagination? Read a biology textbook. How do you know? Well, you can read that. You can read those science books, but those science books could be an illusion, right? Your sense, your senses could be deceiving you. They could be because you don't know. You don't know the nature of reality because you don't have all knowledge. That's why you should put. How do you know that the Bible is? Yeah. I don't have all knowledge. That's why I put my faith in the, revel the revelation from the God who has all knowledge. 
What are you putting your faith in? Are you putting your faith in your limited knowledge? Because then you can't know things because you could always be wrong, right? Right, so we shouldn't put our faith in ourselves and our finite consciousness. Because I don't always agree with every single thing that the Bible says. Well, you might not agree, but you should because like you, you're not, who are you to judge what God has said? Like God makes the rules, you don't, you know? Well, yeah, but can I still have my own like preferences for myself and my own morals? Well, you can, but you're going to go to hell if you rebel against God. So, I mean, there's going to be there's going to be punishment. There's going to be a a consequence for that. You know. Arguing a mistruth with a mistruth. No, like how do you know what's true and what's not true? How do you know? Without without revel no without revelation from a God who doesn't lie, who doesn't change. A triune God who created everything and put human beings on this planet and, and told us in his word, the Bible, that he did create human beings with souls and bodies. The immaterial and the material existing together in the human being. If we didn't know that from God, from the Bible, we wouldn't be able to know what we are. We wouldn't be able to know that we actually exist. For all we know, our experiences are just different experiences from different people in different parts of the universe, different beings with consciousness in different parts of the universe, and their, their different consciousnesses came together to make it look like it's just one person going through it an entire lifetime, but you don't know, right? You don't know who you are, you don't know that you exist, you don't know that I exist, if you trust in your consciousness, because your consciousness is not a foundation for knowledge. Your senses, your perceptions, you can't prove that they're real. But can you prove that the Bible is real? The proof that the Bible is real is that without the Bible you couldn't prove anything. That's the foundation for that the revelation from God is No, revelation from God is the foundation for proof in the first place. Without a revelation from God you cannot prove anything. Don't you think something like reason has always been a thing throughout like the entire existence of Earth? Like, I feel like saying that this specific like idea is your reasoning is kind of like faulty because you're kind of saying that there's something that has like the reason is your reason, or like you're ju judging something with something that you don't have. Like, well, no, no. You're using a preface that's not. Like, well, we need to think. We need to think about this. How do you know anything? How do you know what's true and what's not true? See, but I can throw that back at you. Do, do, you need a world, you need to, everybody comes at reality with presuppositions. What we presuppose to be true about the nature of reality. Many people presuppose that their consciousness is giving them the correct perception of reality. I presuppose that the word of God, the Bible, is true. And when I presuppose that, I actually have a, a worldview foundation for knowledge because that worldview actually makes knowledge possible because I'm receiving information from a God who knows everything and who doesn't lie and who doesn't change. If I, I can't, I need to trust in what he said instead of trusting in my finite, limited knowledge, my consciousness that doesn't know what the nature of reality is because I don't have all knowledge. But you're right? aware of God within your own finite world. Right, I'm aware of God because He revealed Himself to me. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, yeah. I'm right about the position of just why. It's, it's more like, I don't I feel I'm, like somewhere, why does it matter? I'm somewhere yeah. on the outside. It matters because, because God's Word says that you're, you're going to go to hell if you rebel against God. And that's a place of torment. Well, it's a never ending torment. It's the most terrifying thing you can imagine. But also, if my reality is correct, how do I know that, you know, like it's. It's all just so yeah, what it, abstract if you're doing what you that think I is right. Well, the Bible tells us that everybody knows that God exists, but they suppress the truth and unrighteousness. God actually, he wrote, he wrote the work of the law on our hearts. We have a God-given conscience. Deep now we know what's right, we know what's wrong. Because God made us that way. No, a conscience is like the, it's like your it's like your built-in sense of morality, yeah. right? So like, like, what you're saying, like, as like um, yes, people do embrace perversions of God's morality. They can do that, 
but that doesn't mean they're right. That like the ultimately the the foundation for knowledge is the Bible, and that's where we get morality. Okay. But uh, you, people are pushing that away. You know, they're suppressing the truth that they know. That's what the Bible says. They suppress it. That's why they embrace these perverted moralities. What about the billions of people who are never introduced to a Christian God? Um, they're gonna go to hell. Well, well, God determines who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. You know, like He chooses who He's gonna save. Like none of us can escape hell without the Holy Spirit possessing us, coming to live inside of us and changing our heart, giving us faith in Jesus Christ, giving us the desire to stop living in rebellion against God and to start living in obedience to God. That's what He's done for me. I'm not the same person I used to be. He's changed me. That's good. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. So I go and tell other people about that. All right, yeah. And I want the Holy Spirit to convict you and to change you so that you follow Jesus, so that you don't go to hell, you know? Do you think you should get back in summer best before we can? Oh, yeah. Awesome. No, <laughs> think about what I said, you know? It's important. You don't want to go to hell. And you don't know when you're gonna die. If you die tonight, you're gonna go to hell if you haven't repented. Woo! You won't yeah. have you, hey, buddy, you, No, no. I'm going to hell! You won't have a, you won't have a second chance. Thank you yeah! so much.